Uh, welcome, my name is Simon Franklin uh, and this is my crib. We're in the sunny hills of Hollywood at the moment. I've been here for a while we, uh, and we have a nice studio here which is just a nice place to write. Uh, loads of network Macs, um, big screen which would normally have uh, something on the screen but unfortunately um, we're not allowed to show it so uh, it's got to stay black at the moment. Um, I'm currently working on the Magnificent Seven with um, uh, director Antoine Fuqua and it's uh, starring Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt and Ethan Hawke and Vincent D'Onofrio and many others and it's very 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 good and it's an enormous pleasure to be working on that um, and um, uh, so we, we do everything here I've got uh, a number of people working here with me so next door uh, we have a, set, a second setup upstairs is yet another and uh, grand piano and stuff like that um, You'll notice the favorite string library of all time, uh, which is, in my case, actually still the original uh, bespoke strings. I think they, they just uh, bite. I love them dearly. Um, and we started using those on Avatar. Uh, and they make an enormous difference. Uh, the fact that the demos sounded good enough uh, that the directors can actually understand what they're listening to uh, is an enormous thing for us. Um, and that's why when, when Spitfire first came out, this was, you know, it was transformative because we suddenly had orchestral libraries that sounded great. Uh, so it's made a huge difference to um, everything that we have to do. And it also means that cues that we might not get through now can be understood and accepted by the director. Uh, and that's massive. My other favorite little toy here, toy, I'm sorry, Mr. Lynn, uh, the Linstrument, which is spectacularly good controller and allows me to make uh, synth sounds and samples breathe because you can suddenly put vibrato and slide between notes. You can even obviously hold multiple pitches if, you're, um, if your instrument allows you to, to have multiple vibrato. But it makes um, lead lines in particular just uh, feel much, much more um, evocative and human. Uh, and I find this has been immensely helpful and I uh, started using this on a film called Southpaw last year. Um, and it's been great. It really, really, I, I, I sort of, uh, I love using this. Um, we've got a, you know, a number of Mac minis and Mac pros acting as uh, various Vienna servers. Uh, and then I have a main Mac pro here, which is, uh, stuff full to the brim we have um those are the main mac pro and then there are ssd raids um which are i have uh, multiple systems on so for instance this one here is a four terabyte uh rate of four one terabyte ssds which uh contains for instance my spitfire library um and um that makes an enormous difference because Braiding things up allows you to do things like this. Uh, when you're dealing with the sort of samples, uh, the, the, the amount of deluxe samples I do, then being able to actually chuck a whole lot of SSDs together makes an enormous difference. Uh, and it's pretty simple to show. Here's my, uh, I'll just go down to the, the uh, sound lib drive which is where those the the, the uh, spitfire library lines and press that and we just hit um, about uh, a thousand megabytes a second so uh, it makes an enormous difference now if i i get I know, the best i've ever got was at 1200 you can see we're just hitting just under there but Compared to a normal hard drive, which is going to be something like 120, being able to do this, you can see that in terms of any video, I've ever wanted to run video, I've got the ability to write anything I want at any time. So that's important to me. I do run a GTEC, uh, which has got a RAID 5 as well, which has about uh, 12 terabytes of sample, 10 terabytes of samples in there as well. And they tend to be the libraries I'm not using on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll tend to just have a variety of different things here that uh, I uh, 
that I may not want to use. For instance, I have a lot of my old Synclavier libraries from when I started, and those are all in here, things like that. Um, but all the fast stuff, all the orchestral, all uh, the various samples I have to keep um, on, on these RAID SSDs because it makes uh, a huge difference. And it means that I can load up enormous um, setups very, very quickly. Um, this is a pretty small session by most of our standards. This is probably like 120, 140 tracks. Um, but most of my big setups are in the three to 400 track re uh, sort of uh, region. So at that point, the SSDs save me so much time that they're worth, worth spending the money on. We have a Millennia STTT1, and these are Martek MSS ones, which are two beautiful, beautiful mic pre's um, that these days, of course, we do very little recording in here, but they are gorgeous. They make everything sound great. And all I have to do is actually is uh, make sure that there is somebody other there into the microphone uh, who is as gorgeous as they are uh, in terms of his playing or her playing. And in this case, it's George Deering, who used to, usually is in, uh, who's the other end of this. And George uh, is a, a, a wonderful session guitarist uh, in Los Angeles. Um, and if we do percussion, if we do things there, there is close to a bare wire that sounds great. The Millennia as well is just brilliant. Um, they go straight into Pro Tools. Uh, these days the plugins have got so good that I don't see any need to have any analog at all. We didn't use any analog on Spider-Man. Um, we barely used any on Avatar. Uh, probably since 2009, our, our mix rigs end up with probably eight microphone cables, that's about it, and six of them go to the 5.1, and two of them go to whoever we're recording. And the rest of it is entirely digital. So we have pick and mix rigs that uh, we feed the programming rigs into, the orchestra rig is fed from that as well. Um, and it's an entirely digital process, even though we record the orchestra at 96K, we'll then do sample rate conversion within Pro Tools. We did some tests, blind tests between that going analog, and we were very, very happy with the sample rate conversion. Um, so they're great. These I've just recently um, uh, trying out. These are from Neumann, and they're called the 410s and the, I think the 710 sub, they're extremely good. We did some surround mixes for them for CES. I had the joy of mixing uh, the Staple Singers and Marvin Gaye and um, Isaac Hayes, Shaft. Uh, in uh, 9.1. So we had a 9.1 rig in here with speakers in the ceiling. So you had a 5.1 on the ground and then 4.1 above. Um, and uh, these have sounded very, very good indeed. Um, I, I'm, I think they're, they're excellent, I have to say. We've set up a second ad hoc programming room. But we also have, you'll notice a screen on the floor here. And that is to allow uh, a session musician like say the guitarist uh, um, to be able to watch the picture as we're playing so that I can put the picture on there and a, and a, have a counter so that they can see what they're working to and that makes an enormous difference. Um, we've got more stuff upstairs. Uh, there's a Steinway D and there's a second uh, programming suite up there but uh, basically this is it. Welcome to the crib. I've always wanted to be on the cutting edge of technology, so um, I recently found this new device, which I think will be transformative for me. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, this is a thing that will take over the world. It's called the Apple Newton. And um, here, this is the thing. You take this and you can write on the screen. And if you try very hard, you can try and get it to spell your name. but it will try and convert it. And this, I'm sure, will take over the world. At the moment, it believes it's January 1993, but I did manage to get it to work. Um, so keep hold of these things. I think they may uh, have a future. Um, and oh, one thing, Gary Barlow, DX7 card for you.